if that happened, there wouldn't be a wedding to drive away from. So people ask me all the time, how do you get such good car stories? I've determined there's pretty much three ways. One, you try to buy a terrible car. Two, you try to sell anything. Three, you just say yes to pretty much whatever comes your way. So when Ed called me a few weeks ago and said, hey, I'm going to pick up the Lamborghini. You should grab a flight to Phoenix. Yeah, okay. Granted, it was a little bit longer than that because I had to get permission from my fiance. It was a week before my wedding, so I didn't think uh, my fiance would go for that, but surprisingly, she kind of gave me the okay. And I had tons of stuff going on with work and a bunch of appointments, but one by one, they all canceled or moved, and it was like the seas just parted for me to go. So I looked up flights. Uh, one way nonstop flight was like 120 bucks. I'm like, boom, see you tomorrow. We had been using this app called iExit to find various things, uh, gas stations, restaurants, and all that. But it kept kind of letting us down on the restaurants because they would be closed or something like that. So we get to Mississippi and we're looking for Starbucks because the guy driving the Aston Martin had a caffeine addiction and, and required to be refilled every couple of hours. So we get off, thanks to iExit, looking for a Starbucks. And it turns out that the Starbucks is in the airport that is at that exit. So we roll our eyes and thanks iExit. And we figure that uh, McDonald's is the next best choice because they have pretty reasonable coffee. So we pull in and uh, of course, a Lamborghini with the doors up in Jackson, Mississippi is getting all sorts of attention. But in particular from a guy who is working around the dumpsters at the McDonald's. We couldn't exactly figure out what he was doing, but it looked like he was cleaning the ground around them. So he was just asking all about the Lamborghini, this and that. So Ed and Nick wander in to relieve their bladders and refill them with coffee. And I am stuck entertaining this guy, answering questions about the Lamborghini. A few minutes later, Ed comes back. He goes, Doug, Doug, come here. You, you got to see this. So I wander over and Ed has discovered this, an, an expedition turned into a sport track. But upon closer inspection, this is no sport track. This has nautical theme going on everywhere. It's got side rails. It has a sun deck. It has wood in place of the sunroof. It has teak paneling on the running boards. I mean, this thing is full on boat. And it's got a little graphic on the side that says seascape. I'm like, man, somebody... Somebody really liked their boat and wanted a matching truck. So Ed goes, you should buy this. I kind of laughed at that thinking, yeah, 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 funny. I should buy it. Ha ha ha. And he goes, no, no, no. I, th I think the owner works here. And our friend from the dumpster goes, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's inside. You want to meet Clyde? Now, going back to what I said about a good story, how do you form a good story? You say yes. So... My gut was to be like, no, 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 let's just get on the road. But I said, yes. So we go in and meet Clyde. Now, in shrewd negotiations, you have to uh, not play your cards right up front. Well, Dumpster Boy totally ruined that for me because we walk into McDonald's. Clyde, Clyde, these guys in the Lamborghini want to buy your truck. I'm like, oh, come on. How am I supposed to get a good deal now? Clyde, who is a very soft-spoken, clean-cut, elderly black gentleman, looks at me and just goes, I'm real busy right now, as he's stacking the cups for the uh, the soda fountain. So a couple minutes later, he walks out, and we start talking about his truck, and he's telling me all about it, and shows me the antiques that he's picked up for his wife that he hauls around in it. And uh, so he goes, you, you want to buy it? I'm like, yes, sure. He goes, well, I don't know if I'm ready to sell it, but maybe in a month? Like, yeah, sure, whatever. We get on the road and, and uh, to Alabama. About two hours later, I see a 601 number come up on my phone from Jackson, Mississippi. And I'm looking at it going, well, I get all sorts of calls. Who's, who's calling me from Jackson? And Ed just goes, answer that, answer that. So I pick it up 
and it is Clyde's wife, Cindy, and she is looking to sell me the Seascape. So she, of course, tells me the backstory about this truck, and apparently it cost over $100,000 to build, which is unfortunate, and it was in some Las Vegas car show, and they had got it from their son, and their son had got it from a guy who had a boat company, and his, their son worked for him as a mechanic. And he owed him some money, but I guess cash was tight. So he said, well, how about this truck? And I guess that guy used to have a matching 30-foot boat that he hauled around with this thing too, which I will not be saying yes to, even if I do find it. So he got it for payment of work. And then he gave it to his parents in exchange for paying off his student loans. So it had had quite the roundabout way to being acquired by them. So I, uh, they said, well, what do you think it's worth? I said, well, what do you think it's worth? And we did this back and forth. And I said, ah, it's probably worth a couple grand. She goes, nah, I'm not going to sell it for that. I, I need to find somebody who really wants it, who's going to pay me all the money. It's like, well, what's, what's your definition of all the money? Turns out they had paid $3,500 off in student loans for their son. So that was what they had in it. And that's what she wanted to get for it. Like, sure deal. I texted my fiance some pictures of the truck and I got back the response, no, Doug. She clearly hadn't figured out the way to have a good car story and we weren't married yet. So I said, yes, anyway, bought the car, paid for it. That's a boring part. But then I was trying to get it shipped up and I couldn't find any carriers to pick it up for me. Granted, I was shopping bargain basement carriers at a drastically reduced price, but you know, why not? So Cindy jokingly said, I'll just drive it up there. You can pay me. Yes. <laughs> okay. And we were kind of joking back and forth, but she's, she's like, well, how much would you pay me? So I was like, hey, I'm paying the trucker 500 bucks. I'll pay you 500 bucks plus gas. So we kind of went back and forth. She goes, are you serious? I'm like, yeah, sure. You can stay with us. And uh, initially it didn't work out, but then she was going to visit her friend in Phoenix and she found out as I found out, you could get a real cheap one-way flight to Phoenix non-stop. So, I mean, the story kind of begins and ends with a one-way trip to Phoenix with all sorts of car stuff in the middle. So she and Clyde get in the car, make the trek up. And two days later, they pull into my wife's house and uh, we own a Seascape. Now, I tried to get it home in time for our wedding because I wanted to be driven away from our wedding in the seascape. But she told me that if that happened, there wouldn't be a wedding to drive away from. So we got it a week later, just before our honeymoon. So I started doing some research. They had told me it was one of three that existed. And I had found a previous for sale listing for it. And the VIN number matched up. So I'm thinking, man, eh, maybe it's, it's uh, the only one. So I looked up the company that built it. It was called Advanced Automotive Technologies out of Michigan. And I called them up and got a hold of them. I said, hey, I just bought this car that you guys built. And what car? I said, it's an Expedition Seascape. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that was a great truck. And he started asking me about it and, and telling me some of the features that they had made into it. It turns out that it won Best Ford Concept Truck in 99 at SEMA. So I may or may not restore this thing. It is pretty rough shape being, you know, 20 year old custom body work. And uh, I don't think it'll ever make SEMA again, but maybe it'll win Radwood. So they arrive and Cindy is just as much of a character in real life as she was on the phone. She is a nonstop talker. She's got stories for days. And Clyde is just this prim and proper, you know, hardly says a word. You know, I, I, I got him to open up a little bit over the course of the evening. But he just, you know, he, he just exists. And Cindy is the personality in the relationship. So it turns out Cindy is a pizza baker extraordinaire. She makes pizza for other people for money. So she made pizza for us. 
but uh, she wasn't real happy with it because she had actually made the dough at her hotel room that morning because, of course, it's got to rise over the course of the day and the conditions were not optimal. So it was a, a little bit doughy pizza, but it was good nonetheless. And she was complaining that it was the worst pizza she ever made. So she'd make up for it by making cinnamon rolls because she also makes cinnamon rolls for other people for extra money. So she made us the best cinnamon rolls I have ever had in my life. So if you are in Jackson, Mississippi, unfortunately you will no longer see this amazing seascape, sexpedition, boat truck, whatever you want to call it. But if you want to get the best cinnamon rolls or pizza that you've ever had, you can look up Cindy and she will be happy to make them for you for a fee. We'd like to thank Vincero Watches for supporting VinWiki this month. Vincero makes bold, stylish, and well-priced watches out of exceptional materials, and there's a link in the description below for a discount. So check out their website and find the watch that helps make the statement that you want the world to see.